outer orange. What's up guys, it's outer orange here today and we are going to be doing another top deck profile. That is right, today we'll be doing Crow who topped recently with Raging Form. We'll see how that goes. Let's go and look at the deck profile. For once we are switching this time around, oh, usually wow. he records <laughs> me, but today we're recording him. So welcome. You want to introduce yourself? Yes. <laughs> what is up, YouTube? This is Crow from formerly Team Triple Sleeve. Put up that profile. You already know how it is. You know how we do on the Triple Sleeve channel. Of course, just so you guys know, unfortunately, it pains me to say this. I am no longer part of Team Triple Sleeve. It saddens me to say this. But I'm making sure that they are left in good hands. I will be picked up by another team, King Slayers, actually. It will be my new sponsors. You just entered Bushiroad Spring Fest Atlanta. Yes. And you talked. What was your what was your swapping and for what format? All right, so the event that we did was BSF Team League mm -hmm. um, 2022. I played in the V format and the deck that I took, my tried and true, Shadow Balance. Nice. I ended up getting third place. I decided to take Shadows because I just love the clan. I've loved the clan since whew, dating back to 2013, going back to my, the beginning of my mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit of the lore behind me and the reason why I took the deck that I took. So back in 2013 is when I first got introduced into the game. Um, one of our local players here introduced me into it. I was originally on Aqua Force main, believe it or not. Later on down the line, I was like, dark. I like a dark deck. What's a dark type deck? And then my boy, he was like, yo, play this deck. So he gave me Shadow Palance. I was like, yo, this deck is sick. So now we're going to go into a limited 2014-ish in a sense. So I end up taking, end up trading. That's when Tetra Drive came out. I traded him Tetra Drive for a Shadow Palance deck. And I took it to that singles regional back in 2014. And actually, that was my very first regional event ever. <laughs> I ended up getting top eight with the deck. And I was like, wow, this deck is amazing. And the fact that when V started, I was like, wow, I don't have my favorite sub clan. And now they finally introduced it. And I said, I have to take this. I have to get a top with this. Not only did I want to top with my favorite clan, sub clan, I also wanted to top under the event of like, the banner of Team Triple Sleeve because this is my very first event back and I was like I have to do it for them and ho and behold I managed to do it. <laughs> Yay! What is the deck you took? You mentioned Shadow Paladins but what, what archetype did you take? So I ended up taking Revengers. Revengers is my all-time favorite sub clan. I love Luar. Is Luar better than Revengers? I believe so. In premium and in V premium. I think uh, Luar is just highly consistent. It just scales better. But I was like, literally my deck um, name, if you look at my deck log, it's called Something to Prove. <laughs> so I just wanted to showcase that Revengers is, you know, highly competitive and you can take this to, um, you know, competitive scene and do well top and potentially win events. Because I've seen um, before that Rage Form has actually top other events and, you know, other scenes and other uh, spring fests. Last thing before we go to the deck profile, what is the win con of the deck? How do you win? You sit there and you attack your Vanguard. I mean, attack your opponent's face at least four times, three to four times with your Vanguard, and you so GG, shake my hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into the deck profile real quick. So obviously, you can run your V starter. All the starters do the same thing. People are like Crow, why don't you run a Revenge starter? The name doesn't matter. They all do the same thing essentially. So, and I just love Full Bow. It's a cute doggo. <laughs> all right, so we'll go ahead and move on. So we're gonna start off with the trigger line up first. My trigger line is somewhat kind of weird, but I'll explain. So we're gonna go with four of the Death of the Eagle. Now, this is my deck profile now, but I can't, I had to make the switch. Originally, these were <laughs> Dark Bond Trumpeter. Uh, the crit trigger. I'm gonna tell you a funny story. When I was sitting there doing my deck log, I made the deck log without these in there. So I was like, oh, all right, my deck should be good. Go back and check the deck list like last minute after we got locked out of registration. I realized I was like, oh, I didn't put my Reven uh, Revenger triggers in. Well, I guess we'll just play without it then. Just so you guys know, the name does matter and it does come up sometimes where you might have to call this on board to lock it with um, Rage of Fall or to kill it with Rage of Form Dragon. Just the fact that it has a Revenger name is so important. So please, please, please make sure that you put the Revenger names that you, you know, in the deck. But if you don't have them, obviously it's perfectly fine because as you can see, I got third place without it. And we ran two Vanilla Hills and two of the Hill Guardians. All right, so I'm gonna tell you my philosophy behind this when I was actually making this deck. I was like, 
Originally, I was running just four vanillas because you want to take damage early because as soon as your opponent puts you at least four to five damage, they normally just die because you end up going Rage and Fall, Rage and, I mean Rage and Form, Rage and Form, Rage and Fall, Resend, Rage and Fall, Swing again, and it just pretty much die because you just farm so many cards, so you have a you know, pretty big hand. On top of that, you just smash in your opponent's face anyway. So I was like, cool, you can just rush me down if you want to. But then I realized as well, there are decks out there that can almost semi OTK you before you can even get to that point. Example, Astro Poise. So I went into the event thinking, if I go against like Astro Poise, Overlord, or anything that can just outright just kind of kill you in grade three on their first ride, just having the two heal guards are very important. And just having the 20k shields is so good. Because a lot of times you be um, guarding, you be like, wow, I wish I had an extra additional 5k shield. Well, that's why you have your two vanilla hills in there as well. And also, this is uh, searchable off of Bronwyn since this is also a grade three as well. All right, we'll move into the Sentinels. So I ran, oops, that was a surprise. <laughs> three of Dark Shield, MacLear, regular PG, and then I ran my one copy of the Owl. So originally before, I was running a 10-2 split. Would I ran a 10-2 split for regionals? Yes, but after testing out again, I guess like decks like Grand Blue, where they can get like four Skull Dragons attacks off and things of that nature. And anything that just hits relatively high, I was like, wow, you really need the MacLear. But then also there is matches where you can just go, okay, cool, your number is significant. I can save a PG and just one card block it with a 30k shield. So this is why this in there. Also, you want to have a higher crit count because you want to end the game as quickly as possible. Because the longer the game goes, the more that some other decks can just gash you out again, like I said, Grand Blue, for example. All right, next we're going to move into the grade one lineup. The MVP, the absolute most broken revenge has ever to exist, Rental. So this card here is on hit. When it boosts or attack, you can uh, check top five, I mean top three, add a revenge card to your hand, and then the rest goes to the bottom of your deck. And when this unit is retired off a regard by your own card ability, you can soul blast one, your opponent chooses one of his or her regards, and it is retired. This on hit pressure is just insane. So a lot of times, this is all, I like to call this card a bait, bait and punish type of card. A lot of times people will either A, guard this or over guard this. Like if you have this behind your um, Vanguard as a booster, people will go, I don't, I don't want this to hit. I don't want him to search three. Thank you. Thank you for overstanding on guard. So now when it goes to my Raging Form turn, I know that you don't have enough shield to actually block this pressure because you just want the block to block the on hit. A lot of times, guys, please don't fall for the bait. Sometimes just let the search go off. If they, um, A lot of times we already have key pieces in our hand and this is just all a bait. Next we ran four. Rakia, I'm pretty sure I might have butchered that name. So this card here is, once a turn, when you, if you can get multiple these in your soul, this card would be absolutely broken. But neither of their skill reads. On the ride, once you ride your grade three Vanguard, you can search your deck for a grade one and call it the board as rest. This card came up so many times. I'm so glad they created this card because this card is an extra extender in a sense. So a lot of times you can fetch another one of these copies out of your deck. Um, call it to your rear guard, Soul Blast 2, get the grade 2 that you're adding your soul, that's a Revenger, and call it so now you have a um, 2 for 1. Next, we have. I don't have one SP, sadly. <laughs> but um, for Claudius, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't like this card because it's locked behind you being a grade 3. But we just need it for the Revenger name. And it does come up um, sometimes where you just want to get the free, well, it's not free, but you, you want to get the extra card in hand. So that's why this is in here. Once this new V collection comes out, hopefully we get a better grade one that can replace this that's not locked behind being a G3. Last but not least, I ran three, Bronwyn. A lot of times I've been questioned, I've gotten plenty of DMs before asking Crow, why are you running three Bronwyn? You can run two, you can run one, you can run none. It's totally a player's preference. I chose three because you need to see Raging Form Dragon. You have to see it. Uh, I tell people all the time, when you're playing this deck, be weary that if you ride Raging Fall, you're actually putting yourself in a disadvantage than putting yourself in an advantage state. Yes, you're pressuring your opponent, but you um just lose so many cards because you have to discard three. This deck literally just superior calls out cards just for nothing for a soul. That's crazy. So... Seeing the Raging Form is just so important because you get more pluses off of it, so you don't have to actually discard three cards. Just killing three dudes is just free, in my personal opinion. Next, we're going to move into the Grade 2 lineup. One of the hearts and souls of this deck, one of the next best cards that Revengers have, is Tartu. 
Turn two Reese, so bless one, call a great one, or let's revenge a card from your deck. The regard stuff. You call it literally anywhere. So again, this is another extender for when you go into this card here. So if you have three soul, you can go use this skill, call this from deck. Soul Blast 2, get another card. So you literally got another two for one. Or actually you got one for two, essentially. And then also you can use it for rental as well to um, get that out of deck or the Clotus. Next, we run for Rukia. This card here also comes up. I was thinking about cutting this to three, but I was like, this card is just too important to see. You want to ride this card ideally because this skill reads one place. Uh, well, when your grade three unit is placed, it has to be revenge, obviously. Check top three, add any revenge card that's your opponent's grade or less. So if your opponent's at grade three, if you see a raging form in the top, hey, guess what? Free raging form. So it's just free value for no reason. Um, the other skill is if you have a grade one or less, revenge in the same column. Again, key is it has to be revenge or grade one or less. Um, in the same column, it gets an additional 5k power. So it's a 15k beater with a booster. It's a 20k, uh, 23k beater. To round off our grade twos, we run two Leofall. I've been questioned about this as well. They, again, people keep asking me, you're lowering your count or your Avenger units. I personally don't like Claude, I mean, not Claude, it's Durant. Durant is probably one of the worst cards in my personal opinion. CB1 Soul Blast 1 just for 10k, and you need to have the gray one on board to even to get the draw off of it. It's not that good, <laughs> just to be perfectly honest with you. And the fact that the gray one I can tell before is a lot behind gray 3 is insane. As I was telling, um, saying earlier before, this card is just another extender. Literally, this came up so many times in a tournament where I would go, okay, call Leofall. Leofall called a grade one. The grade one, so plus one, gives me a grade two. Now I have two revenge units on board. Again, it's free value, because I like to say this all the time, soul blasting isn't really a cost if your deck doesn't really need to rely on soul like that. So you just get free value out of it. Um, also, this is another good ride target as well in case you miss ride off because you really don't want to ride your Tartu. You want Tartu on a rig out for sack fodder for when you're going into your Rage of Form turn. Um, this is really good so that way you can get rental out the deck. You slap it behind the Vanguard and now you can start the one-hit pressure. Now your opponent wants to block it or if they do hit, you get free value. Regardless, you get a one. It's all on one card plus. All right, so now get into the, pretty much the meat of the deck itself which is the grade threes the heart and the soul my favorite unit of all time raging form dragon so this card here you pretty much it's a limit rate card as well in a sense <clears throat> so the card reads you can sack three revenge units ride another revenge card which is insane because the og when you had to ride raging form dragon but the fact that you can ride any revenge grade three it just works so well with other revenge units but obviously you're not going to run that deck without at least four copies of Rage and Fall, which is another um, vital card in this deck. This card, in my opinion, is superiorly worse than Rage and Form due to the fact that, as I said earlier, you can just call cards out from your deck for a soul, which is essentially free, and have free sack fodder, and start plusing cards to your hand, where this has to discard three cards. And a lot of times you would rather not discard because you're not going to have those um, cards in your hand sometimes, especially when you're getting outright pressure and you're in like kill range, you might have to block excessively. And now you're gonna like draw for turn and you're like, well dang, I need to commit this one card on board because I need to lock some cards to get the free value off of this without having to pay the counter last. So just gonna hop into the skill. So his skill is <laughs> has a lot of text, so I'm gonna break it down. So he has an act skill. You can keep locking as many regards as you want to, and then your adventure units will get an additional 5k power. Like three of your revenge units get 5k power. Another skill reads is a once a turn, just so you all know. He has to CB3, but for each lock card that you have, you don't have to um, pay a counter blast. The counter blast is reduced by one. So essentially, or ideally, you want to, when you're at five damage, you want to go, okay, swing with Rage of Form Dragon. Like you have a full field full of Revengers, swing with Rage of Form Dragon, sack three dudes. After you sack your three dudes, you'll ride another Rage of Form. Rage of Form will counter blast one, assuming that you have at least four open counter blasts. Ride the Rage of Form, call another Revenger out, whether you can be a booster or another attack extender, depending on what you have in your deck, obviously, and you know the momentum of the game, depending on where your markers are. You swing with it. This again, with your second Rage of Form, you sack the um, three uh, Revengers that you have, ride into Rage of Fall. Now, you ha should have three open accessible counter blasts, Especially if your opponent is just like outright just trying to blast you out the gate. You ride this, 
after you go on Raging Form, Raging Form, Raging Fall, you can go swing with this dude here. The other part of the skill is that if you have five damage or at least two lock cards on board, you can discard three to restand himself. So afterwards, you will go CB3, restand him again. So you're going to have one marker, two marker, three markers. Assuming no triggers, he'll be straight up just 43 by himself, which is a lot. Which is pretty much essentially a two to three card block. So that's pretty much the win con of the deck and pretty much how the deck should be played. Again, ratios can obviously be changed out. Like obviously you can cut one Brawlin. You don't have to run Leofall at all. Me personally, I believe two copies is really, is really, really good. Um, if anything I would cut, I would probably cut one copy of this to add one copy of Clot on uh, the Again, I don't like the card, but I see the value in it. Again, it's the Revenger name. But also, if you have Claudius on board and you have Durant on board, you pretty much soul charge, you count boss one, soul charge, you will draw a card. And then the Durant will give you that kind of charge back. So essentially you get a free draw. But again, I will only want one copy. If I was to make the cut, it would definitely be the brown one. But that pretty much concludes the deck profile and pretty much the strategy behind the deck. You really just want to gash your opponent out. Again, there's gonna be times in the game where you're gonna end up just having to straight up either just ride this or after you do your raging fall and you don't kill them, I mean your raging forms and do your raging um, form play and you're just sitting on this, this card just scales so well as well. Like once you're sitting on this and you have at least three markers stacked on the guy, you um, lock three of your dudes, he goes 28, 38, 48, 58. And you just, again, just bash your opponent twice um, with this dude here. And then your rigors, if you have three lock um, in the back, your front rows will be plus 15 each, so they're going to be 25 and 25, assuming no triggers was hit. So again, that pretty much concludes the deck profile. Thank you, thank you so much, Crow, for the explanation. Well, give me a pound. Oh, yeah. Boom! Bye, guys. Thank, thank you. Until next time. Oh, quick shout-out shout out to Team Triple Sleeve as well for being just a phenomenal sponsor. Make sure y'all go shop with them now. <laughs> and also shout-out to King Slayers, of course, my new sponsor. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Crow. And we'll, we'll, that, that ends that. Peace out. That's it on you guys. See you guys next time. Bye. Peace.